Growing up in Vietnam, it was, it was fun. You know, as a typical kid, we get to make toys and uh, go to school. Um, nothing out of the ordinary. Now, you know, I'm so Americanized, but I still retain some of the Vietnamese culture that I grew up with. And that would be sometimes I listen to Vietnamese music to bring me back. Or uh, I cook a lot of Vietnamese food, so that ties me back to my childhood. Um, so these are a set of drawings I did when I was in college. I took one semester off and I just went through and did drawings from memory, mostly, of my journey here to America. And this one, uh, I remember we prayed a lot. So this is um, my image of the boat died and we just floated out at sea and uh, we prayed a lot. Nice. Yeah, it's good. So coming to America was not something that we planned. So we were there to the last day uh, of the fall of Saigon, which is uh, April 30th, 1975. So that's when the communists were coming in and taking over the uh, capital with their tanks and army. Uh, and there were bombs going off everywhere. So for safety reasons, my parents just told us to get on our bicycles and leave this area, leave this chaotic area. And I remember my mom cooked this sticky rice. She said, here, just take this. If something happened, just uh, eat the food. And then when everything calms down, uh, come back. And we ended up in this small harbor. And there people were saying how if you can get out into the international waters, the Americans are out there, they'll pick you up. At that time, there was like a bunch of other families showed up at this harbor. And so, uh, and these three guys from the uh, Southern Army, and they had to leave the country. So they asked us to come along. They said they're gonna charter a boat and go out into the international water. And so they asked if they, we wanna come along. And we said, okay. And we didn't think anything of it. We just thought, oh, okay, we'll go, and then if nothing happened, we'll come back. So, uh, that was the last time I saw my parents. I left them when I was 10, and I didn't see them again until I was 26. So I did a, self, I did a portrait of my parents, and this represents them behind the, uh, the barbed wire, because they stay behind in Vietnam. So other families joined us also. So there was like a big group of us uh, that try to get out to international waters. But then the boat that we were on died, so we ended up uh, floating around. At that time, other people were being rescued, and their boats, they would just leave behind, floating. So we would latch onto those, those empty boats, and then everybody transfer on, and then we would just move on from there and try to get out to the destination. And we did that for several boats until uh, the last one that we were on, it just died, so we uh, ended up just floating out there in the ocean. And we didn't have anything. So we ended up uh, not having food for like three days and just drink water. And then when we were rescued by this Panamanian ship, uh, it was on their way to Taiwan. They picked us all up and fed us. And then we ended up in Taiwan at a refugee camp. And then the Americans got involved and, and process us to Guam and then to a uh, refugee camp in Arkansas. When we arrived, it was freezing. And we thought, what the heck? What do we get ourselves into? So that was like an adjustment in itself because it was such a cold climate. And then the language was a problem, more so for my brother and sisters because they're older. So they spoke a little bit of English, but to uh, apply English to daily uh, communication, um, it was tough for them. So they had to go back to night school um, and learn English while in the daytime they would have to find work. When we settle in Massachusetts, it would be just my sister, three brothers and me, so there's the five of us. I always felt like we still had our culture being together, right? 
and then my sister would cook a lot of Vietnamese food and they would listen to like a lot of Vietnamese music and watch a lot of Vietnamese shows and stuff so I didn't feel like there was like a culture clash. So this is one of my favorite Vietnamese dish that uh, I've learned to cook for us. I kind of made this recipe up based on my sister's recipe. Later on she ended up getting married and so the four boys were like, who's gonna cook for us? So we had to teach ourselves how to cook. So my sister gave me a lot of pointers and I've been cooking Vietnamese ever since. I'm so glad that um, I made it to America and grew up here because um, I just love this country. It allows me to be able to do anything I want to be. Overall, I consider myself an American. American first and then Vietnamese second. Um, and I, I like that part about being American Vietnamese.